The Phillips curve relates to the observed statistical relationship between inflation and unemployment. In 1958, New Zealand economist A.W. Phillips published the results of his research into unemployment and inflation in the UK economy from data gathered between 1861 and 1957. Graphically, each dot represents a year of data, with the Phillips curve the line of best fit for the data. So, what did the Phillips curve show? When analysed, the data suggested a stable and inverse relationship between unemployment and inflation. At lower rates of unemployment, the inflation rate is higher. Policymakers were quick to exploit the curve. If the economy was operating at point A, with unemployment troublingly high at 6%, the government would pump up demand with a fiscal stimulus. It could then predict that, sometime later, inflation would rise. In the graph? to 4% as the economy moved to point B. However, if attention switched to inflation, the government would reverse its policy and impose a fiscal constraint. The economy would then move back to point A. The process of periodically stimulating and constraining an economy was called a stop-go policy. This dominated policy in the UK from the 1950s to the 1980s. So, what's going on? The belief was that the policy worked through its effect on the labour market. Reflating would cause the economy to expand. Unemployment fall. With wages and prices being driven up. Conversely, deflation created unemployment, with wages pegged back. By the 1970s, the Phillips curve had broken down with seemingly no stable or inverse relationship. It was possible to have several inflation rates associated with a single unemployment rate. For example, at an inflation rate of 6%, unemployment rates of 0, 4, 6, 10 and 14% were all possible. To resolve this, American economist Milton Friedman argued that there was a vertical long-run Phillips curve and a series of short-run curves, each associated with a different expectation of future inflation. So, what caused the breakdown of the Phillips curve? As predicted, if the economy starts at point A, with 6% unemployment and 0% inflation, a short-run fiscal stimulus would move the economy to point B. Unemployment would fall, but inflation would rise. At some point, a phenomenon called money illusion, where behaviour is irrational and responds to nominal money values rather than real values, would break down and the economy would move to point C. Unemployment rises back to 6%, but unfortunately, inflation is now in the system. Any further attempt to reflate the economy leads to accelerating inflation as the economy moves to point D, and then E as money illusion breaks down. Fiscal policy cannot permanently reduce unemployment below the non-accelerating rate of unemployment, or NERU for short, as it leads to accelerating inflation. For example, if NERU is at 6%, point A, a fiscal stimulus will simply result in a short-term reduction in unemployment to 4%, point B. However, if the long-run Phillips curve is shifted to the left through supply-side policy, NERU can drop to 4% without inflationary pressure.